And it's another session of Domains 21 with another crew from CUNY. This might be maybe like the CUNY IT conference that maybe didn't happen this year. I don't know. But welcome, everybody. We're here with Charlotte Edwards, Jody Rosen, and Chris Stein, all from CUNY. Chris is from the city of Manhattan, Borough Community College. I always get that wrong. BMCC, Borough of Manhattan Community College. That's right. right. Thank you. And New York City, City Tech, I should be mirroring, <laughs> is both Charlotte and Jody. Welcome all to this session for Domains 21. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks. Now, we're going to talk today about your project, which is in many ways shared across institutions uh, within CUNY called the Open Lab. So I was hoping to start the discussion, if you might give us a little bit of a history and a context for what the Open Lab is. Yes, yeah, so I think Jody was gonna start off with that and then we'll talk about sure. how it gets to other institutions. You know, we were certainly not the first to have a um, BuddyPress WordPress install at our college, but um, really, um, inspired by other ones around CUNY and also um, at University of Mary Washington. Um, we, we really um, were inspired, I guess, most directly by the CUNY Academic Commons and Matt Gold, who um, was a, a founder of that, was also a founder of the Open Lab. Um, we really wanted a space that was a, um, a community space for City Tech. We found that we had um, not really a lot of gathering places on campus. We wanted something that would allow for um, community building, for student interaction, for um, faculty student interaction, um, for staff to feel like they had a place in the community. And we really wanted something that was beautiful, something that people would want to be in. And I think the Open Lab really speaks to that. If you start to look at it, you see how the aesthetics of it are part of the that history, that, that what the call was, what the need was at City Tech. I'm gonna also talk a little bit about um, kind of how it, how it developed at the college was through a five-year Department of Education Title V grant called um, the Liv a Living Laboratory Revitalizing General Education at a 21st Century College of Technology. So really feeling like we as a College of Technology um, should be at the fore and thinking about what, how technology can help us do the things that we should be doing in CUNY, serving our mission and really giving students an opportunity to have technology do something different than just um, be a place for them to upload their papers at the, you know, three times a semester or something like that. I'm gonna let anyone else who wants to chime in there, go ahead. Well, you talked about how beautiful it is. And I think a question that follows up is, um, we can look at the actual site, but I'd be interesting to hear, you know, based on the original. And I think I was there for the official launch. It was 2000. You were. Yeah. 2012. Yes. You yeah. were. And yeah. it was a, it was a, big event and you all have had really impressive uptake across your yes. community at City Tech. And I'd love to hear about not only the uptake and how that kind of got woven into the culture, but then how and what examples you've used to kind of move it beyond maybe City Tech, if that makes sense. Sure. So, I mean, um, it, it, as Jody said, it started out as this, as part of this, um, it was a grant from the um, US Department of Ed Hispanic Serving Initiatives. And um, uh, the, the initial group of users was just going to be the um, faculty who were involved in that grant. So just a, a few uh, fel fellows, I think it was, 16 fellows, 15 fellows, 18. and 18 fellows, there we go, and their students. And um, so it launched in the fall of 2011. That's, you know, um, going to be 10 years. And um, we didn't publicize it to anybody. Um, people just came out of the woodwork and clawed onto it beyond the fellows. And so, you know, by the January, there were a thousand people on the platform already without ha us having done any advertising at all. So that really kind of seemed to speak to the need there 
um, for this kind of, of a community space. And, and then since then, it's really just grown and grown and grown um, every year. And so we've now served over 36,000 members of the City Tech community, That's, as Jodie mentioned, students, faculty and staff, obviously the great majority of students um, since its launch. And I think it was, this was a phrase that you used, Jim, that we don't break up with, with students at the end of the semester. So unlike other platforms that one could mention, so, um, you know, alumni are free um, to still use the platform and come and go. And we don't get rid of people's content. So everything is still there from the beginning so it kind of has its history built into it in a way which is cool i don't know if you want to say something else jody or and then we can just talk about it, box as well and bring in uh sure. bring in chris, chris yeah just to say that you know we when we when it was developed we really didn't have um we knew we wanted to use it for courses we want we wanted to have a place for clubs to meet for for people to interact in whatever ways that they wanted but there was no defined um, limit on that. And I think every semester we see more different uses. Um, and it's really inspiring to see how the community takes advantage of the tools that are available and um, kind of reinvents them in new ways and finds new uses and new new developments really drives the development. Um, and I think I think CBOX Open Lab is a perfect example of that if we want to transition to talking about that. Into that. Yeah, sure. So um, when we, Judy, uh, Judy, Judy, Judy mentioned the uh, the CUNY Academic Commons. Um, so that was um, the precursor, really the direct precursor to um, the Open Lab. Um, and you know, after they'd been up and running for a while. Um, they found that they were asked by people, you know, how can we do, um, how can we have a, a CUNY Academic Commons ourselves? And um, so they launched the CUNY Academic Commons in um, 2009. We launched the Open Lab in 2011. So in 2012, they built um, something called um, Commons in a Box, which basically packaged up the features and functionality of um, the CUNY Academic Commons and made it available um, to anybody who wanted to create a commons type community. And um, so similarly with us, once we started talking to people and sharing what we were doing with the Open Lab, um, uh, people started approaching us and saying, how can we do that too? And we didn't have a good answer for them. So um, then we partnered with Matt Gold and the Commons in a Box team to create um, commons Commons in a Box Open Lab. So um, that means now there's two versions of Commons in a Box. There's Commons in a Box Classic, which is the original, which is used by groups of all kinds. The, the biggest one probably is the Humanities Commons. That's the biggest example. Um, but there are all you know, hundreds around the world at this point. And um, so we partnered with them with funding from the NEH and, and were able to create something called Commons in a Box Open Lab, which means that, you know, for people who are watching this, this isn't just of academic interest, what we've been doing at, at City Tech, it means that anybody can um, can do do this too. So, um, and, uh, and have. BMCC were early adopters um, of the platform, so I, I'll throw it over to Chris now if you want to talk a little bit about about how it's going over there and how you got in, involved. Yeah, sure. So actually, I've been involved in this in one way or another for a while. I was part of the uh, original team on the CUNY Academic Commons, and so I saw the the growth of that and uh, with our development of the, the CBOX as well and had been wanting to do more of that at BMCC. Uh, one of the things, the original, originally the commons didn't have st allow undergraduate students on it. So, um, and this is one of the, the one of the great uh, developments that came with City Tech's Open Lab uh, in terms of, you know, having a platform that was really for undergraduate students and, and uh, you know, allowed that to grow. Uh, since then, the commons now does have undergraduate students on it, but we still wanted to have it at BMCC. And actually, we also were part of a Hispanic serving institutions grant um, that I was lucky enough to be part of and, and help write. And so built in some funding to get the CBOX Open Lab in. You know, once I saw that they had put that out and I knew it was going to be a lot easier to bring over to BMCC, 
uh, I put that in and also we wrote in that they would support that. So uh, the, the team at City Tech has really been instrumental both in helping to create the CBOX OL, but also to support our development of it, BMCC. And so now we have a thriving community there. We have, uh, I, have to, I have to look again how many thousand students in faculty we have there and you know, a few hundred courses have, have been on it as well. So it's it's been going great at BMCC too. And then Chris, if I could just add to what, what you said, the grant that um, allowed you to bring the Open Lab to BMCC is also, you know, um, especially fostering transfer. So thinking about how could students come from BMCC to City Tech and how the Open Lab might be part of what facilitates that transfer for them or, you know, is familiar in both places. And then also, um, in terms of development, how can we foster transfer from one open lab to the other um, has, I think, really driven some interesting projects um, as well. Yeah, and I think that's something that's, um, you know, now when we're developing a new something for our open lab and or thinking about it, we're also thinking about how would this work in CBOX open lab and for other people, you know, and, and as well, too. So it's sort of um, made this larger community and, and with shared resources and ideas on development. So can I ask, I mean, on that point, is there a federated then um, s relationship between the two open labs, the one at BMCC and the one at uh, City Tech? Um, like, are there abilities to share resources across them, uh, to join groups across different schools? Because that's starting to sound like a broader network that might find its way across all of CUNY. Yeah, that, I mean, that would be awesome. We're not there <laughs> yet, but we are um, about to launch a community hub for uh, CBOX Open Lab. So um, that will be a space where anyone, and they don't have to be at CUNY, um, will be able to come and mingle with other, um, you know, people who are interested in or who have actually adopted CBOX Open Lab. So we're working on that right, you know, right now. Um, so that will be a place where we can start to have conversations and we're really making this turn from it being the open lab being something that's at City Tech to the open lab being more of a model, you know, that other people uh, are, are sharing in and participating in and, and contributing to. So, you know, the community that's driving development of it isn't just the community at City Tech, but um, this broader community, which is really, really exciting. So we hope that at some point, I'll yes. have enough money to do some like actual federation, but we are going to be with, you know, in addition to the community hub, and this is funded through the, the CUNY OER initiative, which, you know, we should acknowledge, but um, so they um, are helping us with uh, creating something um, that will allow us to pass um, sites backwards and forwards uh, across um, installations more easily via an export and import. So kind of, um, you know, a step up from the, the built-in, WordPress um, export and import right. um, methodologies. Yeah, not, not not yeah. quite true federation yet, which is actually, you know, something we've we've kind of all had in the back of our yeah. heads to do. Um, there are some complexities in that that have you know, <laughs> made it a little bit um, further off, perhaps, than we, we might want. But that is definitely something that we're all interested in and, and, and looking forward to. I remember early, next step. Yeah. and I remember early on with the promise of Bunny Press was the idea that you could have these federated communities, which would then stand in for some of the, you know, liabilities we've come to know with places like Facebook and et cetera. Like you could have these distributed networks and these would be education specific. They would be open source and they would be built and supported by a community of academics and educational technologists, which I think CUNY has been doing a phenomenal job, which you three stand in as a great example of that. Now, let me ask you a question um, on that note. How have you, or have you, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to leave the question too much, but have you seen um, the open lab instances both at um, BMCC and City, take, uh, City Tech take on a new um, importance uh, over the last year when things kind of have gone online overnight, so to speak. Uh, I'd be interested in knowing. Yes, I, I'd say you know, at BMCC, we it was very helpful in a number of different ways. Um, you know, some like in my department, people had already started um, 
a lot of faculty didn't necessarily use our, you know, CUNY LMS as well. Uh, and so this was a, a great place to go to it and to allow students to easily and quickly get on it. Uh, you know, we also, you know, that's one of the nice parts about it is that you can make it open. And so if you need to, you can put up a course and let anyone come on it and not have to worry about whether they currently have access or not, or if they're on their phone or, or whatever else they are. So we found that very helpful. We also found that there's a few departments and, and other areas who used it to put up information for uh, faculty and staff as well, right? So it was a place to gather and put up information and we could do it on our own without sort of um, permission, you know, getting permission or, you know, asking someone else to, to put it up for us as well. So uh, I think in a number of different ways and, and City Tech probably has some uh, as well. They were they were much more established when, uh, when COVID hit, obviously, than, than we were, but still even for us with a relatively new installation, it was still very helpful. I would just add, we, we very much took an approach of wanting faculty to use what they were comfortable with. So rather than, um, you know, doing some super heavy advertising about the open lab, I, I think we wanted people to, to do what they were comfortable with, you know, what their support network, um, their, you know, office mate that they text with all the time, if they're, uh, you know, using something else, we, we wanted them to, to feel comfortable with that. But um, we definitely wanted to support the open lab because of um, some of the ways that we saw it as being more helpful to a, a really, um, you know, new new set of challenges. Um, and I think some of those that have been really helpful are things like having an open course. So when students are not sure what their login is yet, and they're, they're you know, trying to, to get a, a whole bunch of first semester students on board um, before they you know, when they've never even set foot on campus, they don't know who the resources are and whatnot, you know, being able to work in the open was really valuable. Um, so I think that's one thing that that really stood out for us being able to provide a lot of asynchronous um, support. So things like modules about using the open lab, teaching on the open lab, learning, um, our extensive help section, things like that, I think are, are really helpful. Um, and then I, I would just add, something that I think was a long time coming, but really just took off was um, we were asked to set up spaces for, um, for we have a lot of poster sessions and um, to, to be able to do those poster sessions on the open lab. And I think it was just a really exciting way. I mean, not that poster sessions are necessarily the most <laughs> exciting uh, in pl places to interact, but it was really great because it, it gave a much wider audience to our students who are, um, you know, doing undergraduate research, and then now their their work is visible to a much broader group, and they can send that to their families or add it to their ePortfolio more readily, and really um, let other people see the work that they're doing. I think the other dimension, especially um, at this conference, is OER. Um, we we already yes. had um, the OER uh, program at City Tech was was on. Um, the Open Lab from its launch, which um, was several years ago now. And um, then there was this big influx of, of funding from the state and, and CUNY. And, um, you know, they were really able to to leverage that to really advance that program. And we've had a very deep collaboration with them over several years. And um, so OER obviously became extremely important during during this time. And um, so that's that, but that's something where, you know, we were, we were already really well uh, positioned to help out with that. And um, so, you know, that's, that's really been kind of a core cool part of our, our mission is the, the OER aspect. I'm like the guy who won't stop asking questions. And another thing, can I, this is more of a comment than a question, that guy. But <laughs> I'm interested in this really also because you mentioned OER and the notion of how, what does an OER, what does this platform look like in regards to OER? For example, I know Moodle is building like the Moodle network. And the idea was people would upload open educational resources and people would use them magically. And there was always that idea of creation, reuse, so how do you think that's going to happen or work within the open lab? And the fact that people are already established there, doesn't that like almost it's like already where you're eating. So when you bring the food, it will be eaten. Exactly. like it almost seems like a yeah. natural link. So I'll stop yeah. Comment exactly. and let you I wonder if we should show people the, the open lab a little bit um, just so that people can can see 
you know what it yeah. what it looks like and um, then then you know might be um, easier to understand um, me just pop over I, I will say just to, to Jim's question more specifically I think when you when I get asked about different aspects of the open lab um, I think the fact that that portfolios and OER are part of the system um, is a really big deal because it means that you're working all within one platform and you're not saying, okay, I have my courses, but then my, my portfolio is somewhere altogether different. Or I have my course here, but the OER for it is on this other platform. Um, that they're all really together means both that the, that the tool, the skills you learn, you apply to everything, but also that you're able to really transfer um, not just skills, but content or conversations um, from one place to another within the platform. And I think one more thing on top of that, Jody, that I'm interested in, and I think you all are doing very well, is that sense of cohesion, right? Like there is a relationship between right. where you would do a poster, where you'd have your portfolio, and right. then where those resources across classes and groups you right. like. That's one of the things the LMS actually figured out. It wasn't the best tool, but it had a sense of cohesion. So you felt that you were, you know, getting everything you needed and it was mm -hmm. one stop. But in fact, you know, the open lab using open source technologies and open some APIs and stuff can really seem a lot of that together. And that federation you're dreaming of and that idea of having these spaces where people can own it and then move on, it's a natural fit for OER. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually also, you know, um, because people were already working in the open and so you're just a little hop a skip and a jump from from you know um sharing your sharing your work we can show that in a in a second but just to give a you know maybe a mini tour um we've got the uh, the open app homepage, which is really designed to showcase um members work so it, it kind of um to give a to give a beautiful presentation space for for members' work, um, so there are courses, projects, clubs, and portfolios on the Open Lab. Um, on uh, CBOX Open Lab, you don't need to use all of those things. You don't need to use all of those terms. You can really change it to be whatever you want. And the homepage has a place where you can communicate with members via the slider, via spotlight to showcase things that are going on in the community, and then it shows you know the most active. Uh, most recently active groups um, uh, on the open app, in the open app. Um, Charlie, I wonder if you want to flip over to BMCCs just to show. Sure. The, yes. Um, just to show as parallel similar. but different. Yes, but we, we, exactly. we were very similar, although we decided to um, use the term communities um, as as one thing that would uh, be shown as a little different and instead of clubs on ours, which is you know one of the great things about the CBOX OL is that you can kind of modify it and and take it to be what you want it to be. Um, and I think the other thing too with OER, which by the way, you know, our um, OER money is, is is funding the BMCC Open Lab as well in terms of both um, hosting uh, at Reclaim Hosting and also um, a instructional designer who's helping as well. Uh, you know, and I think that all those are are part of it as well. That um, you know, wh while it's it's this nice one place that you can go and do all of it, um, also having support there. Um, and just the, the way that it's thought of is open from the beginning, right? So, you know, you can come in and create a, a course or, you know, other material and then someone else can go and you can say anyone can go copy this, right? And it's like yeah, one, one click and you're on your way to, you know, bringing in the resource. And I also have found, at least personally, I'm also a department chair as well. So uh, in looking at faculty development, one of the things I found too is that the the more you can tie it directly into what so, uh, someone's doing, especially if you're talking about faculty adoption, um, the more likely they are to use it. It's, it can be really um, awkward for people to go to a large um, place like Merlot or whatever sometimes, and then try to search and search and search for something that might work versus, you know, someone you already know or a class you've already seen and that person's exactly. like here's my thing and you know here's what I do you can take it and use it it's you know much more likely that that person is going to then adopt that material and use it as well exactly. it localizes the resource right like it's part of a community and it speaks around that I I mean it's just powerful and I think and I'm a fan of CUNY pretty unabashedly but I think the other thing which deserves the the credit is you all open source that the fact that Open Lab at BMCC could do so easily what City Tech did 
is because there is a commons in the box package that you all paid for open source and allow people to do this. And like you said, hundreds of schools are doing that across the nation and beyond. So it's an interesting model. And I really do think like, you know, whether it's the Rebel Alliance or whether this is something that you can mainstream <laughs> more broadly at CUNY, it's a very important project. I know folks who we work with at the State University of New York are also super interested in your work. So can you talk a little bit about it? Like, do you want to remain in the shadows or is there a point where um, <laughs> using some of the resources, both state and city, to kind of push this as like the new normal and as a real um, alternative to um, what we're doing right now? Definitely. I mean, I would just say that the, the hundreds, the number was for the Seabox Classic. Um, so I think we're a small but growing community on the um, on the Seabox Open Lab side. So the Seabox Classic has been around a lot longer than we have. So, but we do get the feeling now that we are kind of, you know, this is the beginning of the movement here. As you mentioned, you know, we, we are engaging with other people who are piloting um Box Open Lab and uh, in in other institutions, and we would love this to to become more widely used for sure. Yes, um, yes, and and I think that it's an interesting take too because it's instead of trying to build just a single resource that everyone comes to, right? Like, um, you know, as you might do if you're Facebook or whatever, right? You're it's important for them that everyone goes to there. Right? They don't want you to make another app or anything like that. You know, in the model we have, we're sort of building a resource that people can then use and build themselves. Um, you know, and so it's sort of like the, the platform is what's being shared yeah. as well. Uh, and so I think it's it's the part of the interesting piece on the next one is both sharing that ability to do it and then looking at other ways we can share across platforms once they're built too. Um, and I will say that this is, uh, it, it takes a lot, while it does take resources, you know, it takes people and time to do all of this. Um, it takes a lot less often than uh, a standard sort of sort of vendor based system where you're you're paying someone to do everything for you and someone else is running everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're not paying you're not investing in people in CUNY when you're doing it that way. And I think right. that's really important to think about who are the people who are supporting it and how is everyone who's involved you know, developing in their, um, you know, open education uh, skills and and what they're bringing to it and and how we're mentoring. Right. And other it, people who are coming up through the through the Graduate Center, let's say. Exactly. And I think or on our campuses. Yes. Right. Yes. And, that, and that's what's actually allowed for, um, you know, that sort of development of people and talent and, and yeah. um, of, of the sh uh, that sharing of knowledge has helped it to grow in different places, right? Like if I hadn't been involved in CUNY Academic Commons, we might not have brought the Seabox OL here. If you know, if Matt wasn't involved in that either, he you know, it might have right. been harder to get uh, the open lab at, at City Tech, Tech yeah. you mm -hmm. know. And then you know, other things at CUNY as well. There's a number of other different projects, and it's so I think that you those dividends you get from investing in in people when you do an, an open source thing like this really pay off in yeah. in a number of ways. It's and I would just add, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, please. I, I would just go add, ahead. you know, every conversation that I've been part of with um, people who are, who have an install of, of Seabox Open Lab or who are interested in it, have a, a somewhat different um, sense of kind of how, where it's going on their campus or what, you know, what it's centered in and, and also what they want it to do. And then they're not just saying, okay, hey, we can, we can install this, give me the instructions, but they're saying, we wanna be able to do this. How about this? And, and invest exactly. in, in developing that and then giving that back to the larger community. And I think that's really exciting to, to have the perspective of so many different um, situations, so many different communities then um, contribute to it. It's also yeah, interesting. I'm sorry, Charlie. Okay. I can't okay. stop, Charlie. Go ahead. No, please. <laughs> no, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, every time you bring somebody into the community, whether it's on the, the individual community level, like at the City city Tech um, or BMCC, or in, in now in this growing community of adopters, you bring in different perspectives and different ideas. And, um, you know, every day, I mean, you would think we've been doing this now for 10 years, but every day, pretty much, you go to the Open Lab and you see something that you, you didn't expect, you didn't yeah. know would be there, some idea that somebody's had that they are able to realize because these are open tools that they have in their own hands that they can 
you know uh, do things with you know without asking anyone's permission or um so it's it's awesome and now now that's happening on the larger level now through this cbox open lab community that we're starting to build so it's very cool and it's interesting like the the way in which cuny works scale wise i think it's the biggest city university in the in the united states i'm not sure of that but i believe yeah. but it's got 27 yeah. campuses yeah. and so 25, 25, 23, 20, 23, I don't know. Like don't, don't quote me on any of it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of campuses. And lot, it actually yes. can <laughs> scale some of this stuff. And you have enough people that you can reach a critical mass and really test out these tools. So in that way, like the investment in this kind of technology and this kind of innovation and this kind of experimentation is gigantic because you can have a gigantic impact on a on a really I love CUNY's like I'm a big CUNY fan, but I love their recent thing. It's like no one produces more kind of not only scholars, but promotes people into the middle class and creates this sense of like belonging than the City University of New York. And I think that's such a brilliant frame for the work that's happening on the ground. And we know the challenges that technology bring into that equation of equity. And the fact that you all are working towards building an infrastructure that might help that is really, really like, for me, it's empowering and really like awesome work. So thank you all for the work you do. Thank you so much, Jim, for having us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. I am a big fan. <laughs> and I mean that. I'm, I am your number Likewise. one exactly. fan. <laughs> oh, thanks again and uh yeah. well now go to this commercial break <laughs> um, nom nom